My dearly beloved in Christ, you know that July is considered the month of the precious blood. There are devotions available for reciting prayers in honor of the precious blood of Jesus this month. And we should reflect upon the value of the blood of our Lord, how by shedding his precious blood, he redeemed us. He reopened the gates of heaven. And what a blessing it is for us that our Lord died for us, shed his blood for us. Listen to these words of St. Paul to the Hebrews in which he refers to the Old Testament and the sprinkling of blood. He says, When every commandment of the law had been read by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of the calves and of the goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded for you. The tabernacle also and all the vessels of the ministry he sprinkled likewise with blood. And with blood almost everything is cleansed according to the law. And without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. So we think about the mercy and the goodness of our Lord that he shed his own blood that we might not have to do so. Of course, we have many martyrs in the history of the church. And on the feast of a martyr, the priest wears red vestments to signify that shedding of blood. But again, what gratitude we owe to our divine Lord for dying for us. And this death of our Lord on the cross is renewed, not to death, but his offering of himself to his Father for us is renewed every day in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. What a great dignity the Mass has or is. It has been said that the Mass is the greatest thing in the world. Indeed it is because it is the renewal in an unbloody manner, but the renewal of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Because in the Mass, the victim is the same, Jesus Christ, who offered himself on the Calvary and in the Mass under the appearances of bread and wine. He is present and offers himself, his body and blood, his life to his Heavenly Father. The principal priest at every Mass is the ordained priest, and we refer to a priest as an altar Christus, another Christ, because our Lord is the principal priest at every Mass. And his ordained priest uses his words, but he is the principal priest. Remember the words of our Lord at the Last Supper. After he changed bread and wine into his body and blood, he said to the apostles, Do this in remembrance of me. So our Lord wishes the Mass to be continued until the end of time. It is very important for us to reflect upon the dignity of the Mass, the greatness of the Mass, that we might attend it with devotion and attention. Because it's not so much a matter of how many Masses we attend, it's how well we attend Mass. Now obviously, it is very good to attend Mass on weekdays, to go to Mass as often as possible. But let us especially put the emphasis on attending Mass with attention, with devotion, with reverence, with piety. And it reminds me of a story in a wonderful book on the Mass called The Hidden Treasure by St. Leonard. And I've used this story before, but it goes like this. There was a woman who heard a priest give a sermon on the Mass, and she was all fired up, and she thought to herself, I want to go to Mass every day. And she made a resolution. She would go to Mass every day for a year. And she devised a little interesting practice. She made a box, put a hole on the top, and every day she would come home from Mass and take a bean, and she would drop the bean into the box through the hole. And she thought that at the end of a year, she would be able to open the box and there would be 365 beans for the masses she attended throughout that year. So finally, at the end of the year, she opened the box and what was her dismay to find just a few beans in the box? 
And so she ran right away to the priest, and she was all distraught, and she said, I don't know what happened. I heard your sermon a year ago. I resolved to go to Mass every day, put the beans in the box. Now most of them are gone. And the priest said, well, how well did you attend Mass? And he said, and in fact, when I'm vesting for Mass, there's a window right by the vesting table, and I see you coming to Mass, and you're gadding about, you're talking to your neighbors, looking around, you're not coming into the church with recollection, with a preparation for Mass. And maybe God is trying to tell you something, that it's more important how well you attend Mass than how many Masses you are present for. So how do we attend Mass? Well, you know that the best way is to have a missal. And follow there, in our own language, the priest that the pre, the prayers that the priest says in Latin. What a wonderful thing that we can have missiles with English or for people in France and French and German and Spanish, Italian or whatever language people can follow and they know what the priest is praying. So to unite yourself with the priest, reflect upon the beautiful prayers, their meaning. At the same time, one should not feel bound necessarily to read every prayer that the priest reads. Maybe you come across a prayer and you find it particularly inspiring. And so you stop and you reflect upon the meaning, maybe reread that prayer and not be so quick or so anxious to jump past it in order to keep up with the priest. But the best way, again, is to use a missile. But sometimes you might just be harried and, and you know, exhausted and, and find it, you know, mentally been very tried by so many things. And you find that trying to keep up with the Mass in the Missal is maybe not as devotional as another way of attending Mass. Some will pray the sorrowful mysteries of the Rosary and meditate on the Passion or read some prayers that saints have written. St. Leonard devises a method he says, divide the Mass into four parts. Let's say from the beginning to the offertory, then maybe the offertory to the consecration, the consecration to communion, and then the communion to the end of Mass. So it's divided into four parts, and for each part, concentrate on one of the ends of Mass. Adoration, thanksgiving, reparation or atonement, and then petition. And say some prayers of whatever it is, adoration, thanksgiving, etc. And in fact, he himself wrote some prayers for that. Because those are the four ends of Mass. But you see, there are different ways. And again, meditating on the passion of our Lord. But the important thing is that we are attentive. We are attending Mass with devotion, with our mind and our heart, united with the priest, and, and attending Mass devoutly. So let us reflect during this month of the precious blood on the wonderful gift we have of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, where Jesus Christ offers himself to his Father for us. There are two differences between the Mass and the sacrifice on the cross. Our Lord's sacrifice on the cross was bloody. He died physically, shed his blood. The Mass is the unbloody renewal of that sacrifice. But the other difference is that on the cross, Christ earned for us the graces of redemption. He reopened the gates of heaven. He merited all these graces for us. In the Mass, he applies them to our souls. So those are the, the differences. Otherwise, the sacrifice, again, is the same. Let us treasure it, and above all, let us attend Mass with as much devotion and attention as possible. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.